Thank you, Pastor. Praise the Lord. Looks like you are not as strong as I am. I said, Praise the Lord. Recharged to excel. Recharged to excel. We're taking that understanding from technology. You know, the phone you have in your hand, good. I mean, everything it ought to have, all the programs in there, all the plans in there, all the possibilities in there, you charge it. And then the power is there. And you even watch it. You see the level of the battery. And then you're able to use it. And you keep on using it and using it. And the battery is running. It will run down. And then, if you still want to continue using that uh, telephone, that uh, tablet, or that cell phone, you have to recharge it again. Recharge to excel. And so you have to make the effort. And you have to go to the, so to the source of power and plug it in there and recharge. Not only that, I'm talking to you today. I've not started. I'm just, uh, you know, warming up and uh, trying to make you understand. Now you understand today. We have teenagers. We have college, university students. We have those who have graduated. We have those who have gone through youth service, youth corpus. They are. And we have those who are young professionals, and you are there in your profession. And we have the young adults who are here. We're actually ranging from about 12 years of age to 40 years of age. And so you don't expect, I'm only going to be talking to the teenagers, I'm talking to everyone. And everyone... Everyone that uses any cell phone, he has to recharge so that that phone can give you the excellent service it's supposed to give you. Not only that, look at the profession all in life. I'm going to be reading a verse of scripture to you that says, Daniel and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego was ten times better than all the rest of the people in Babylon. Now, I started talking about the telephone. If you look at the first cell phone, before all these new uh, phones came out, they had limited service. But the people that got that phone up, Either it's Apple or Android or any other. Those people, they kept on working, they kept on thinking until what you have today in that little cell phone you have in your hand, it took a big, a large computers to store those things in. They kept on improving until they became 10 times better. Look at aviation and look at aeroplane. The first kind of aeroplane that came out at the beginning by those uh, bright brothers it had limited function but then they keep on improving and now 10 times better look at the bridges that we have and we used to have the bridges all over the world that will get over any ocean or any sea and now we have developed to the point that tunnels inside the sea can go like that and because the people in every profession, they are 10 times better, even more than 10 times better. And uh, look at the cars we have. If you saw the cars, 1900, the cars they had at that time, the speed and the make and everything. But now the world is going up 10 times better. 
And you see, well, even in education now, uh, you know, when I was a teacher, we were using the chalkboard. And uh, if you wanted to get any result, you paste the result there on the board, maybe at the university. But now, everything, uh, we've gone 10 times better. When you are going to fill a form, you don't have a hard copy now. The thing is there, you fill it online, and then you get the result online. You can even do online studies now, which we couldn't do at that time many years ago, but now we're 10 times better. And so we come today. And I want to set you thinking, what do you do? How do you live? How do you prepare yourself so that in your field or maybe any other field you are going to get to in your practice, what you are doing today and in your spiritual life, of course, how can you become 10 times, 20 times, 30 times better? It will happen. This is that generation that will rediscover again that whatever we have done in the past, whatever we have, whatever we have achieved in the past, now, this is just everything you got until today. It's just a springboard and you get on the spring and then I see you up and down and then you dive into the future 10 times better. Give me ten times better. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you today and bless your name. Lord, we thank you. Because these are the ends of time. And you have called us so that whatever we have got, whatever we have done, wherever we have been, whatever we have produced, Lord, we pray that today you open our eyes and we become ten times better in Jesus' name. We pray, Lord, you recharge our battery our brain, our mind, our focus, and the divine energy inside us so that we'll become 10 times better in Jesus' name. Lord, touch everyone, transform everyone, and bring your triumph to every life in Jesus' name. I confirm, I confer, I convey the blessing of the Lord upon everyone. Ten times better. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. You can sit down. We're coming to Daniel chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 20. Daniel chapter 1. We're looking at verse 20. It says, And in all matters of wisdom and understanding, the king inquired of them he found them 10 times better you underline that in your bible you underline that in your heart and you underline that in your in your vision where i am now god helped daniel shadrach meshach and abednego how can i become 10 times better one two how can i become 10 times brighter what happens that here i am somebody is able to write a textbook he has the intelligence he has the understanding he has the training and he could write that here am i just to read and understand how is it a human being here on earth has the intelligence and the understanding to write his is to write Mine is to read. If he could have that intelligence to write, I should have the intelligence to read and to understand. I will understand. Ten times better, ten times brighter, ten times higher. After all, as we are born into this world, look at our height. We can't remain in that, on that height. We have to be growing and growing and growing until we become 10 times higher. And we need to be monitoring what we don't measure, we can't assess, and we can't grow in that 10 times wiser. Look at Daniel 
Daniel in chapter 1. How wise was he? And then at the end of the three years training, ten times wiser. And then look at him in chapter 2, in chapter 3, in chapter 4. And then when you come to chapter 8 and chapter 10, and you come to chapter 12, if you compare Daniel by chapter 1 and chapter 12, Ten times wiser, ten times healthier in our lives. As your days are, so shall your strength be. How do, what do I do? How do I live? How do I eat? What do I eat? How do I sleep? How do I rest? How do I exercise? How do I utilize everything I have so that as I look at my health now and I grow and I grow older and older and I look at the promise of God as your days are so shall your strength be how can I become 10 times healthier and then I am you know I'm stronger but am I going to remain at that level of strength how can I become look at Daniel Shadrach Meshach and Abednego how can I become 10 times stronger I am steadfast I am steady in the in the pursuit of things in life steady but how can I become 10 times steadier I'm born again I'm a child of God and by the grace of God that grace came into me and it taught me how to live soberly and godly and righteously in this present world as I move on how can I become 10 times godlier I'm, I'm looking at every area of life in your relationship with people. I'm looking at every area of life in your understanding and maturity. I'm looking at every area of life and I'm saying, how can I in my life, in every choice I make, in my profession, and in my regard for everything the Lord had given me, and I'm improving and I'm proving, how can I be 10 times higher than ever before that's why we're here and wherever you are wherever you are as a young person as an older person as even people who are beyond 40 years of age they used to say a fool at 40 is a fool forever now people are proving that wrong there are people who have been asleep and slumbering on the until the age of 40 and at the age of 40 45 at the age of 50 they wake up and they say what does that person have that i don't have the brain he has i don't have and the intelligence he has and i don't have and what a passion power does he have that i don't have and they wake up at 40 at 45 at 50 and then they start i've even read of an old woman at the age of 70 and she decided she didn't go to primary school when she was young and then at the age of 70 she decided she was going to go to a primary school and go through that I've read of a 67 year old woman that uh, stopped uh, secondary education when she was a teenager and now at 67 she said why what's happening the college is there for everybody and there's no age limit and she registered and then started at you know that the sophomore at the first level and went on and on and graduated by the time she was 70 71 what can't we do if you have the principle the idea if all at 40 is a fool forever that's your choice but you're going to come out of that thing and the Lord is going to do in your life what you have ever been dreaming for. And you'll move on and move on and move on until you are ten times better. Now understand, we don't just become ten times better. You are looking at, to become ten times better, you are looking at increase, increase, increase. It's not a great jump. If you look at there's something we call simple interest, all of us should understand that. There's another thing we call compound interest. We should understand that if you increase by 2% in one year, 
Three percent in one year. Simple interest, that principal, that hundred percent, the principal. When it's uh, one uh, year, you add three percent, you have 103. And then the following year, you have 106. The following year, 110. That kind of interest and increase is very slow. But you come to compound interest that whatever you do let's say for example now you do something in a quarter and in a quarter you increase by five percent then you start the next quarter at 105 and you take five percent of that and increase it will go beyond 110 is compound interest and you move on like that and move on like that in a few years you'll become 10 times better Amen. Yeah. That's right. But you know, you have to plan, you have to develop, you have to have an agenda, and you have to have what your goal is to become a 10 times achiever, 10 times planner. 10 times developer and 10 times achiever that's what makes us to achieve that's why we're here i'm talking to you today on reproducing excellent excelling daniel's for this generation reproducing excelling daniel's for this generation and if you count yourself in you are in if you say i want to be an excelling daniel in this generation it will happen in jesus name i'm talking to you on this in three perspectives three points three sections and three subtitles we're looking at number one recharge and transformed to excel and we're not just here to you know to just observe all righteousness there is a youth impact and it happens every month gck crusade and this is the time now and we come so that we'll fulfill all righteousness no we come so that the power of the lord and the strength of the Lord and the vision from above will get into everyone and you become recharged. You're getting dull, you're getting stagnant, you're getting weaker, and it appears the focus, the vision is no more there. And then you come, and the power of the Spirit of God will recharge your life and will transform your life so that you will excel. Somebody there, you will excel. Recharged and transformed. To excel. Number two, re-challenge. You know, sometimes you were challenged some years ago, some time ago, and you have forgotten the, the, the voice and the sound of that challenge has now dwindled and died down. But now you want to have another challenge in your life that you'll wake up. Everybody today, you'll wake up in Jesus' name. It says you are rich at ledge and toughened. You know, in the life in which we live, no matter what IQ you have, no matter what plan you have, there are people, there are things that will stand in your way and as the situation gets tough and tougher, if you don't become tough and tougher to meet the challenge of the day, whatever kind of brain you have, you'll be behind. You have to be challenged and toughened so that you become exceptional. Exceptional. Somebody there, exceptional reach a new challenge coming upon your life and toughened to be exceptional number three is recommitment you know in life it's only what you commit yourself to that you excel in it's only what you stick your head into and you say i am here 
and I will make it. Yes, that, that's how we succeed. But if you are the so 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 um, kind of a student, is so so professional. If the wind is blowing there, looks like they don't want to go in that direction. You're not tough, and you don't have what it takes in tough times to have a tough mind that you will penetrate and push through you'll not be able to achieve anything but we come here today so that you will be rechallenged and you will be toughened and you become exceptional in your life in jesus name and then recommitment to training for excellence training for excellence you are training yourself self-training and you are training with all the things that are available now any subject you have that they're online and you can start from level zero i didn't know anything of that subject before anything of that career before anything of that profession before you can start and then you commit yourself afresh commit yourself anew to training for excellence you'll excel in jesus name i i will excel in jesus name it may take five minutes it may take more than five hours it may take more than five days it may take more than 15 months but if you commit yourself and you say this is where i am going and this is what i will have there is nothing that can stand in your way you will excel you'll be extraordinary and your life will be full of excellence in jesus name you know if you give me all that uh, ground floor, amen, <laughs> we're not going to fly. But if you give me that higher, better, brighter, greater, louder, amen, we'll get there. We're looking at number one now. Number one, I'm looking at recharged and transformed to excel daniel chapter one i'm reading from verse eight daniel chapter one reading from verse eight but daniel purposed in his search the environment was not conducive to excelling the environment was not conducive to god helping anyone nebuchadnezzar was too much of a visible figure before the people they learned his subject he changed their names and he gave them the kind of accommodation the Chaldeans could give he taught them the language and the culture of the Chaldeans and he gave them his dainties and drinks everything was calculated to make them like Babylonians but Daniel said I'm of another race. I'm of another set of people. And I'm not to be conformed to this Babylonian thing. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself. Whatever others do, he will not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. You know, all the others, they were proud and drinking the same brand with the king. The others, they were proud and he looked at the billboard and he see that, you know, that hero who actually might be a zero in his personal life, might be a zero in his private life, might be a zero in a family life. But then on the board, they see the fellow, this one is a hero. And then he holds a bottle of drink 
and then they arrived there, drink with the hero. And everybody, they looked at, um, they looked at them, uh, Nebuchadnezzar, and they said, you know, Ariok said, that's the wine the king drinks. And actually, Loki, you are brought as captives to the land of Babylon. And Daniel knew that he was going to excel beyond Nebuchadnezzar. What Nebuchadnezzar, what would have forgotten Daniel will bring it out in chapter 2 and watch the magicians and the astrologers and all the people of Babylon, what they were not able to interpret. He knew he was going beyond them. If you're going beyond them, you don't talk like they talk. You don't look like they look. You don't drink like they drink and you don't uh, you know make a fool of yourself like they are making fools of themselves. That's the reason why Daniel proposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with a portion of the king's meat nor waste the wine which he drank. Therefore he requested of the priests of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. Look at chapter 2 there. Chapter 2 uh, Nebuchadnezzar had had a dream. And Nebuchadnezzar became afraid. He was troubled. He was confused. But there's a man that we're looking at. Fear never came into his heart. You know, in life, if you want to go this way, you're afraid. You want to go that way, you're afraid. And fear controls your life. Fear controls your thinking. You're not going to excel above them. Nebuchadnezzar was afraid in chapter 2. And then all the magicians that should interpret the dream, they were all afraid. They said, Nebuchadnezzar king, nobody ever asked anybody to come and recover the dream he himself had forgotten. And that man became angry. And he said, all of you, you will die. You can't recover my dream. You can't interpret my dream. And he gave a decree that every one of them should be killed. Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego included. Come and see our man. Ten times better in courage. Ten times better in fearlessness. He heard, and the executioners came. They knocked at his door, and I see our man, Daniel, and he came out calm and cool and collected. He said, Who are you here? What have you come to do? Oh, come to take off your head? No. Neither you nor Nebuchadnezzar can determine the day I leave this earth. Let me go and see that Nebuchadnezzar. And then he came in. That's our man. A man that knew. Even at the face of death. That here is what the Lord is going to do. Ten times better than all the other people. And he said, Nebuchadnezzar, I hear that you had a dream. You're looking for the answer to your problem. Give me time. I'll come back to you and tell you what your dream is about. That's exactly what he wouldn't give the magicians. He said, I know you're looking for time. Because you see that the dream is gone away from me. And you're looking for time so that I then was, okay, 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 leave them. He wouldn't give them time. He said, now, you're going to all die. And our man, Daniel, came in with 10 times assurance and in 10 times confidence and he says give me time I'll get back to you don't touch anybody I'll solve your problem for you that, that's why we're here that's what you want to find out in your life how can I be so confident and trustworthy that I will be asking for time and Nebuchadnezzar that will not give anybody time he'll give me the time you become God's favorite I'm looking at chapter 2 there. Chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 27 and 28. In uh, Daniel chapter 2, reading from verse 27, it said, Daniel answered in the presence of the king and said, The secret which the king had demanded 
cannot the wise men and the astrologers and the magicians and the soothsayers show unto the king? Verse 28. In verse 28, it says, But there is a God in heaven. And he had connection with that God. There is a God in heaven. It says, and he maketh known unto the king Nebuchadnezzar what shall be in the latter days thy dream and the visions of thy head upon thy bed are these and I began to reveal what no other person could reveal. Remember Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. After the passing of chapter 2, then comes chapter 3. And in chapter 3, Nebuchadnezzar now decided he was going to raise up an idol. And the idol was a uh, heavy head and weak feet and that idol of uh, that he raised up he said everybody should worship but there are men of destiny there are men of decision there are men that decide that whatever others do here is where i stand they see the fire burning. They see the furnace heated. And they see everything. And they see the fury of that Nebuchadnezzar. Look at chapter 3. I'm reading from verse 14. Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, Is it true? Am I hearing you are a non-conformist? Am I hearing you are bold and fearless? Am I hearing you will not worship my idol? Am I hearing you know who I am? And I set my mind this way. Am I hearing you are setting your worship, the worship of your God above my idol? He said, is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Do not ye serve my gods no worship the golden image which i've set up look at verse 15 in verse 15 it says now if ye be ready at what time that she hear the sound of the cornet and the sound of the flute and the harp and the sackboard and the Sartre and the dual sima and all kinds of music, Babylonian music. If you fall down and worship the image which I have made, well, but if ye worship not, ye shall be cast the same hour into the midst of, of a burning very furnace and who is that God you say you're serving God here we are this is Babylon here I am this is Nebuchadnezzar and here whatever I decide demand decree that's final I am that's what he thought I am the final authority here whatever vision you have don't carry in here and whatever desire and whatever goal you have don't carry in here and whatever decision you have made don't carry that in here because Nebuchadnezzar said I am the final authority here who is that God that can deliver you out of my hands we're looking at Daniel at Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego look at verse 16 it says in verse 16 Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we. Now, you must understand every time as they talk to Nebuchadnezzar, they have to follow protocol. 
and they have to say what everybody says. Even if he is uh, blaspheming their God, they have to say what everybody says, even though he is uh, challenging them and he wants to change their conviction. They have to say what everybody says. What do they say? O oh, king, live forever. They didn't follow protocol here. They said, here, you challenge our God. They said, Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. Look at verse 17. They said, if, if it be so, our God whom we serve, and we will not serve your idol, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fairy furnace, and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. And eventually, you know the story, you are cast into the burning fairy furnace and it stood, you will stand. There is a God in heaven that has all power. He can quench all the fear, fierceness of that fire, any fire coming into your life, you'll say you'll not worship idol, you'll not bend to the idea, the ideology of the day. And then people say they'll make the fire, they make the environment, they'll make life fiery for you, fiery for you. That fire will not burn you. Eventually, this uh, Nebuchadnezzar himself had another dream. We're coming to chapter 4. In chapter 4, he had this dream. This time, he remembered the dream. But he needed interpreter. He needed something that would tell him uh, this tree that grew up and the branches reached into the heavens and then a voice came of the watcher from heaven and said cut it down could anybody ever cut down the tree Nebuchadnezzar there is one that is higher than the highest he thought he had it was high and he could do anything he could waste lives he could destroy lives and he could muscle anyone he could silence everyone and he could look at everybody and the fire will be coming out of his furious face can anybody cut down that tree make him mad and eat grass like animals there is a god in heaven and it's a god of power and it's a god that can do whatever he will do to bring the proud down and he came finally to the conclusion we're looking in Daniel chapter 4 and reading from verse 37 in Daniel chapter 4 reading from verse 37 now after God dealt with him now I Nebuchadnezzar praise and extol and honor the king of heaven there was a standing Daniel there was an interpreting Daniel there was a focused Daniel there was an unshakable Daniel and because Daniel remained who he ought to be eventually Nebuchadnezzar have to come down as we go through life you'll find fellow workers you'll find fellow students you'll find neighbors and they are into the business not of increasing and improving themselves they're into the business of bringing everybody body down. Then the business of building the fire of furnace, the furnace of fire for everyone. Then the business of making life difficult unbearable for everyone. But if you are like Daniel and you stand firm, if you are like Daniel and you stand focused, if you are like Daniel and you stand faithful, those Nebuchadnezzars in your life that want to burn your life, they want to burn your career in life, they want to burn your aspirations in life, Life, all of them will come down. All of them without exception, they will come down in Jesus' name. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and extol and honor the king of heaven, the king of heaven, the king of heaven, and all whose works are truth and his ways judgment, and those that walk in pride, he is able to abase now. What made Daniel who he was? What made Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego 
who they were and what will bring that same heart that same mind that same progress and that same courage of daniel into every heart today the courage of daniel will come to you the power he manifested will come to you in jesus name amen daniel d decision and devotion decision and devotion that's what makes us that daniel daniel had decision the first letter of his name he had decision he had devotion if you in your life you decide it can be today that you say i've been wumbling I've been here and there. I've been up and down. I've been indecisive in my life. I've not stayed on anything. And I want to excel like Daniel D. You have decision and devotion. A. In the name Daniel, in the nature of Daniel is abstinence to advance. Abstinence to advance. I, I, I don't, I, I, you won't make much of anyone. They say, take this. Yes, sir. He swallows it. Take that. He swallows it. It, it. it does not even read the label on the bottle. It does not even say, those who have taken that, drunk that, eaten that before me, what was there? outcome but in the case of daniel he read the label on every bottom he read the label on every package he read the label of what people presented to him he read the label in the ideas and ideologies that people presented to him and true to his name abstinence for abstinence to advance he abstained from that abstained from that abstained from that yes all the magicians were around he didn't get involved in their magic and all the sorcerers were around he didn't get involved in their soothsaying and all those uh, astrologers they were around he didn't get into stargazing like them he knew that he had to abstain from all appearance of evil Daniel and he not church the new nature he nurtured the new nature when you come to the lord the lord gives you a new nature if any man be in christ is a new creature and daniel showed that he will not eat the old stuff he'll not wear the old stuff he'll not think in the old way and there was a new nature if any man be in christ is a new creature he has a new nature old things are passed away and behold all things have become new and that new nature he nurtured the nature it is what you nurture that will grow it is what you nurture that will develop if you nurture evil that evil will grow if there's a little lion there not strong to kill you now not strong to break your bones now and you nurture that lion nurture that lion, nurture that lion eventually what you nurture will grow up and become stronger than you are and might destroy your life but if there is a new nature and if there is a loving nature if there is a christ-like nature if there is a converted nature and you nurture that new nature with reading the bible and we pray to our god and reaffirming your consecration reaffirming your conviction it is that nature that you nurture that will grow up daniel d a n i initiative an influence look at daniel daniel heard that they're going to kill all the wise men nobody told him what to do he took initiative you know in life if you're going to excel like daniel you have to take initiative look at all those uh, you know these young people brothers and sisters sons and daughters they took the initiative and uh, that uh, lady said i came out of college and i knew that only about 10 percent of the 
the graduates are employed in her country. And the ancients said, all the other 90 percent out of the 600,000, all of them, they had nowhere to do, they don't go, and they had no job. And she took initiative, initiative. You have to take initiative so that you can become a better influence in your world. And then he, in Daniel, is education for elevation. Education for elevation. Now, there are many people that go for education, but they are not educated. They buy certificates and they buy testimonial and they buy everything they can pay for it if you pay for it and you have certificate you don't have education and you don't want elevation in life you're just thrown out of college because in college no education and in life after you are passed out of uh, secondary school high school tertiary institution university whatever we keep on educating ourselves because as we read in Daniel, it says knowledge shall increase. And in the world in which we live today, you know in the past, it will take about 50 years for the knowledge of the world to double. And later, it will reduce to about 10 years. And in 10 years, the knowledge of the world will double. Now, uh, the experts tell us within two years, two years now the knowledge we have now within two years doubled and if the knowledge is doubling like that and you don't have real education and you stop reading after passing out of school there'll be no elevation what you could do 10 years ago you cannot do that now with the same knowledge and the same training that you had 10 years ago. It's the continual education that helps you to be elevated all the time. Daniel, lowliness with loyalty. He came before the king and he said, it is not because of any wisdom I have better than other people, but it's because there's a God in heaven who wants you to have the knowledge, the interpretation, the revelation of what you are looking for, and was loyal. And when he came in chapter 4 and the king told him the dream, he stood there, dumbfounded, and for one hour, he could not talk. And then when the king said, Daniel, whatever it is, tell me. And then Daniel started by saying, the dream, the interpretation be to them that hit thee. He loved the king. He was loyal to the king. He was lowly before the almighty God, before the God of heaven. And then he was loyal before the earthly king. That's Daniel, that's Daniel. And if we're going to Cell. That's what the Lord is calling us to. He's saying we must have D, decision and devotion. He said we must have A, abstinence to advance. He said we must have N, nurture of a new nature. We must have I, initiative and influence. We must have E, education for elevation. And they must have L, lowliness and loyalty. Let's come to point number two now. We're coming to point number two. And it's the rechallenged and toughened uh, nature so that we can be exceptional. There's no doubt in your mind. There's no doubt in anybody's mind. In the whole of uh, Babylon, everybody knew that Daniel was exceptional. Look at Daniel, so quiet, and then, but when he comes to his time to talk, he opens revelation from heaven, he was exceptional. Look at Daniel, all the magicians said, there's nobody on earth that can give you this interpretation except the person, the man or the woman in whom the spirit of your God is. Look at Daniel, he was exceptional. Look at Daniel, the fire will not bother him, and the fury will 
not bother him and the edict of the king will not bother him and the Belshazzar that was even drinking and became so bold as to take the instruments from the house of God in Jerusalem that they stored in their temple in their shrine go bring me that and he was drinking out of that and then the writing came on the wall many many take a person and he called Daniel in and Daniel walked in like he was the master of every occasion that man was exceptional God can make you like that and God can so turn your life around that what jewels other people what distorts other people what puts other people heads down and legs up the Lord was straightening you up I said the Lord was straightening you up I can just imagine as I see you in days to come I see another Daniel I see another Daniela that as well, I can tell from your work, I can tell from your look, I can tell from your stand, I can tell with the way you comport yourself. Hey, come on, this is another Daniel of our generation, and this is another Daniela of our generation. You see, there is she there, the Lord confirm it in your life, reach a ledge and toughen to be exceptional you cannot live a victorious life in babylon without being tough in your heart the things that surround you in college at the university the things that surround you the idolatry the witchcraft the evil the suicide the magic that surrounds you as a professional there's no way you can be like a daniel in that place without having uh, this challenge and reach a angel and top mindedness so that you will excel look at uh, daniel chapter 5 i'm looking at daniel chapter 5 and i'm reading from verse 26 in verse 26 daniel chapter 5 this is the interpretation of the thing many god has numbered thy kingdom and finished it how could you talk like that this man is profane this man is terrible and he's so brazen that you can take the vessels in the house of god and drink wine with his wives and concubines and here daniel comes an exceptional man and he said thou god whom you disrespect and god whom you dishonor and God, whom you disregard, God has numbered thy kingdom. I'm finishing verse 27. In verse 27, take hail, thou, Beshazzar, look up at me here. You see that writing on the wall? It came because of you. And thou, brazen man, profane man, thou at which in the balances and not found wanting look at verse 28 in verse 28 thy kingdom is divided thy kingdom is finished is found wanting is divided and, and given to the meats and the passions and now welcome to chapter 6 in chapter 6 Daniel with all this gift and with all this interpretation and with all these opportunities he had had and with all the position he had of being the only voice in the land that could talk to kings he could talk to Nebuchadnezzar he could talk to Belshazzar and now they said this man what are we going to want to get rid of him and you're not going to find Find that any flaw, any fault, any falsehood in his life. And somebody said, I know I will can catch him. He loves praying. He concentrates on prayer. He doesn't do anything without praying. Uh -huh. How can you catch him with that? We're going to go to the king and we're going to say anybody that prays to any God any god for these 30 days he'll be taken and thrown into the lion's den uh, oh someone said that's right that's right that one will catch daniel either he will be stubborn and heady and he'll keep on praying and then uh, 
the lions will eat him up. Or we will achieve our goal. He will understand that the people here, they don't want this high level, high powered holiness and righteousness. And now the lions are waiting for him. He will so pedal. He will calm down. He will stop the prayer. Either way, we get him. And now in chapter 6 of Daniel, verse 10. Daniel chapter 6, we're looking at verse 10. It says now, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, and he went into his house, and his windows being open in his chamber to build upon his knees calmly as if there were no threat about praying about religion about worship he kneeled on his knees three times a day he said if their threat will not stop my breakfast my lunch my dinner feeding the body then their threat will not stop my prayer, my petition, my supplication three times a day. And so three times a day, we were told he prayed and he gave thanks before his God. He gave thanks before his God. God, I thank you. You have made me who I am. God, I thank you. You have made me fearless. You have toughened my mind. And I don't fear all those presidents and all those people. People, all the princes, God, I thank you. I know the lions are there. You created the lions, but you didn't create them for me. You didn't create them to eat me up. You created me and gave me my assignment. You created the lions and gave them their assignment, and their assignments are not to clash. The lions are doing their duty. I will keep on doing my duty, God. I thank you. The lions don't have grace, they only have the instinct, either the instinct to bounce upon people and eat them up or you can control the instinct but me, you have given me influence, you have given me intelligence, you have given me understanding, you have given me your grace, you have given me everything in spite of the lions Lord, I give thanks unto you as he did a full time. And then you know the story. The people came and we saw him. We caught him. He was praying. And he went to tell the king. And he was said, there's somebody here. His name is Daniel. He has uh, flouted your command. And he has neglected your edict. And then they brought him out. And the king was trying to, you know, delay. They said, you cannot. Because you know, if the law of the Medes and the Persians and it cannot change. So they brought Daniel out and threw him into the lion's den and the lions never saw anybody like that before he doesn't have any fighting spirit and his peace and his patience took the sting out of them and weakened all their claws and weakened their teeth and weakened them and then all through the night they became like a cool good soft mattress for Daniel and Daniel slept well while the king could not stay sleep in his palace and then the king came early in the morning and with a lamentable voice and said Daniel thou servant of the most high God is your God whom you serve able uh, to deliver you from the lions and here come the strong voice of a righteous man and he said live uh, O king the Lord the God of heaven has sent his angel and he has shot the lions Mouth, they do not hurt me. Is that so? Come out. And they looked at him. He was still as complete after the lion's den experience as he was before the lion's den. You remain complete. Whatever lions are roaring around you, you remain complete. If you just have the mind and the heart and the decision of uh, Daniel, the lions of this world will not eat you up. We come now to chapter 7 and chapter 7. The Lord was going to show Daniel the real power, the real dominion. In Daniel chapter 7, I'm reading from verse 13. Daniel chapter 7, we're looking at verse 13. It says, I saw in the night visions and behold one like the sun 
of man came with the clouds of heaven. You see that, um, that Daniel, he had one eyesight to see the things that be now. If all you have if is eyesight, you only see the present. You'll not see the future. He had number one, eyesight. Number two, he had insight. Insight. He could see the Son of Man coming or the clouds later. You know, a man like that, a woman like that, having eyesight, having insight into every problem, every difficulty. You'll excel in life. Look at that, he said, I saw, and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven and came to the ancient of days, and they brought him, the Son of Man, near before him, the ancient of days. And then in verse 14, in verse 14, it says, And it was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom that all people nations languages should serve him his dominion is an everlasting dominion and he is a which shall not pass away and then it says which shall not be destroyed look at chapter 8 and i'm reading from verse 1 in daniel chapter 8 reading there from verse 1 it says in the third year of the reign of Belshazzar, a vision appeared unto me. A vision appeared unto me. It doesn't matter the condition of Babylon. A vision came unto me. It doesn't matter the economic recession in Babylon. A vision came to me. It doesn't matter the brutality of the man on the throne. The brutality of Nebuchadnezzar or Belshazzar. It doesn't matter who I see running things and running the shows in Babylon. A vision came unto me. There are people that their lives depend on who is at the top of the empire. There are people, their lives, their vision, and their courage, their fearlessness, and their goals, everything depends on who is there on the throne. But in the case of Daniel, look at this man. The things around, the things physical, the things psychological, the things philosophical, and the things professional, Everything happening around him never moved him. I pray you'll be like that. That's why we came so that the same grace and the same power and the same assurance and the same authority will find in Daniel whoever is there on the throne. Whoever is there directing shows here on earth all the same the vision of the eternal will come to you. And it says, after that, which appeared unto me at the first. I want you to look at the last verse there in verse 27. In verse 27, it says, and I, Daniel, fainted when he saw what was going to happen. And I was sick in certain days. He wasn't sick forever. Actually, the sickness there, maybe you know, is the, is the impression and the influence, the power of the mind on the body. We call them psychosomatic diseases. The effect of a fearful heart, a sorrowful heart, a downgraded, oppressed heart, oppressed mind on the body. They say it's mind over matter. They say it's the effect of what happens on the inside on your body. And because of what Daniel saw and what he saw was coming upon the world, his heart, his mind, his inner man was affected. And he was sick certain days, but he got, he woke up. He said, the Lord showed you that not to depress you. The Lord showed you that not to discourage you. The Lord showed you that that not to make you sick it should you because you're a favorite of his and you're going to see the future what was what was happening and then he woke up and said afterwards i arose i rose up and did the king's business 
And I was astonished at the vision. But none outside. People were just living their lives. None understood it. Look at Daniel. What do we learn about Daniel here? Number one, he had exceptional excellent spirit the spirit you have when the holy ghost comes to live inside you and then he cleanses your soul your spirit and you have an excelling and excellent spirit number two he had an excelling wisdom the wisdom that other people do not have wisdom belongs unto god if any of you lack wisdom let him ask of god nothing doubting because he that doubted or waver it will be like the waves of the sea to and fro let not that man think he shall receive anything from the Lord he said wisdom is of you God and I want wisdom and God gave him excelling wisdom number three he had evident salvation evident salvation a person that lived like in chapter six were told he was preferred above all the presidents all the people he had evident salvation number four for enduring courage. That man had enduring courage. Look at, you know, the lions have been a kind of a meat hungry, and once they throw you in there, you are gone. Oh, he said, it doesn't matter. God determines how my life will end. Neither Cyrus or Darius, nor the magicians, nor the astrologers, nor the presidents will determine the age of my life. He said, God is the final determinant. And because of that, he had enduring courage. What if in your life, any office where you are, any, any school where you are, what if in your life you have that evident salvation and you have that enduring courage and you fear none? And you fear nothing that you have that courage in the Lord. My life is in the hands of God. But somebody has the power to open the lion's den. They have the power to open the lion's den. I have the privilege of going in there and standing for my God. And an angel will come and stop the mouth of lions. Let somebody say amen. Amen. Number five, entire consecration. Entire consecration. Belshazzar said, interpret this for me and I will give you gifts. He said, hold on to your gifts. I'm not your servant. I come here. I'm not for pay and I'm not for sale. And you cannot sell the gifts. You cannot buy the gifts I have. Keep your gifts by yourself. I will still interpret for you. You see, that's a man that has entire consecration. He had number six, earnest faithfulness. Earnest faithfulness. He read the writing on the wall. He didn't kind of modify the meaning. Being afraid of the king, being afraid of what they will do. This is Babylon. This is not my country. This is not my place. I came here as a captive. How can I say this now? Behind or before him, he had a kind of courage that will not bend or bow. We're looking at number seven there. Elevated sincerity. Elevated sincerity. Everybody knew this man a sincere man. This man, you cannot cower him, conquer him, and make him to compromise. That's what the Lord wants in our lives, that we will have elevated sincerity. Number eight, exemplary sanctification. Exemplary sanctification. I hear many people, I'm sanctified, I'm sanctified, I'm sanctified. And I'm asking, my friend, do you know the meaning of I'm sanctified? The damnic nature is uprooted. Is that what you're saying? The depravity is taken away. Is that what you are saying? The habitual lifestyle, a defeated lifestyle that you have been living, all that is transformed. And now you have 
transparency in your life. You open your windows, you kneel down, even though they are watching you and they are trailing you, and they are saying, I wonder whether I will do that again. I wonder whether I will go that direction again. The man had real sanctification, exemplary sanctification. Number nine, he had effective supplication. Effective supplication. There was no case in the, in the life of Daniel that he prayed for something, either for Nebuchadnezzar or for himself or for Judah or for anyone. His supplication, God always answered. That's the kind of man the Lord is calling you to be, the kind of woman is calling you to be. Number 10, he had extraordinary faith. Extraordinary faith. It's like uh, Abraham saying, uh, my servant, stay there. I and this lad, Isaac, will go yonder and worship. He knew that God had told him to kill Isaac for his sacrifice. But he said, I and this lad will go yonder and worship, and we will come back unto you. Be, uh, unto you, be waiting for us. Daniel knew that was going to the lion's den. His ministry had not finished in chapter 6. He was still to have all those revelations that God will give to the world through him. I'll go in there. I'll come back again. You'll come back again. You will show up again. When they think we have finished him, you have just started. I have just started. Number 11, he had inquiring mind inquiring mind after the lord had shown him the vision in chapter 7 he wanted to know to have understanding of what these matters are number 12 he had enlarged dutifulness and usefulness he said after the vision i arose and i went back to serving at my post. All this the Lord wants us to have so that we'll become like excelling Daniel today. The Lord did it for him. The Lord will do it for you in Jesus name. Where are you? New life. New nature. New focus. And new progress in your life in Jesus name. Let's look at number three now. Number three we're looking at the recommitment to training for excellence. Recommitment that now, as we come to the conclusion of the message, you look at that Daniel now, and we're looking at chapters 9, 10, 11, and 12. And you say, look at what Daniel did. Look at what Daniel became. And I want to recommit my life. Now I want to have focus. And now I want to have further achievement. We're looking at chapter, chapter 9 of Daniel, reading from verse 2. In Daniel chapter 9, Nine, reading from verse 2 in the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by the books the number of the years whereof the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the prophet that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolation of Jerusalem. Hold on. Let, let's do some calculation here. Daniel, when he got to Babylon, he was a teenager. Put the age at either 16, 17, or 18. Now, in the Babylonian captivity, the people had spent 70 years, and Daniel had been in Babylon for 70 years. If he started at the age of 16 in Babylon, and now he has spent um, he has spent 70 years in uh, Babylon, had everything together. He was 86 or 87 or 80, 88. And uh, people's, some, uh, some authorities have said he got there at the age of 20. And at the age of 20, after 70 years, the man is now 90. And if you look at that, he said, after we spent 70 years there, and it's about 90 now, he says, I, Daniel, understood by 
the books. The man was still reading at 86 or 88 or at 90. There are people that don't read anything anymore. They've come out of school. They won't even read newspapers. They've come out of college. They won't read anything. And if you bring them together and you say that the exam you took and you had first class um, four years ago, you're going to sit for the same exam now. They have not read a jot after they came out of school. They're old now at 32. They're old now at 38 and they cannot read anymore. And if they're trying to read, even what they had studied before, they cannot read anything anymore. They have become engineers and they do not know the development that is still going on in their field. They have become, they have become doctors and doctors they practice, they know what to, prescri what to prescribe. If you have cold, if you have catar, and if you have a fever, if you you have typhoid, if you have malaria, they know this is what they always prescribe. A new product has come. The pharmacies are not standing still and they're producing something. And the medical journal is there. Do you read? Daniel was still reading. He was still studying, even at the age of 90. And so he said, I understood by the books the number of the years whereof the world of the Lord came to Jeremiah the prophet that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolations of Jerusalem. So he began to pray. Let's look at uh, chapter 10 there. In chapter 10, uh, we're looking at uh, verse 11. In chapter 10, looking at verse 11, it says, and, and he said unto me, O Daniel, a man greatly beloved Loved, understand the words that I speak unto thee. Uh, you know, some people say, uh, I became saved, I became sanctified, and I lived a holy life. And what did that earn me? Persecution, lion's den, criticism, opposition. And so the people are telling me, go soft. Moderate what you are doing. Moderate what you are saying. Holy, holy, holy. Don't let it become too much because you know the people around you, they don't like that. And if you want to live, when people get older, they want to live, you know, a life that people smile at them. They want to be sure that people love them, people appreciate them, and they want to be sure that people are thinking well of them. They say it's uh, when they live like that, when they have that, that they have peace of mind and eventually they will die peacefully and they cannot uh, they cannot have everybody happy with them if they take a strong stand like the two when in their 40s in their 50s daniel did not soft ped up daniel kept everything he knew even at that age of almost 90 and the angel said a man greatly beloved understand the words that I speak unto thee and stand upright for unto thee am I now said and I was uh, and he when he had spoken uh, this word as true trembling look at verse 12 in verse 12 it says then said he unto me fear not Daniel fear not Daniel you remember many years before fear not Daniel and now at old age the Lord is still pumping that confidence encouraging to him fear not uh, Daniel for from the first day that thou did search thine heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God thy words were heard and I am come for thy words angels will attend to you Heaven will attend to you. Look at verse 13. In verse 13, it says, But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one and twenty days. But lo, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me and I remained there with the kings of Persia. Verse 14. In verse 14, now. 
I am come to make thee understand. I am come to make thee understand. What happens to us in life when the wind blows this way? We don't understand. When sickness comes that way, we don't understand. When events happen, we have been climbing, we have been running, and we have been moving on, then something happens, everything collapses, and we don't understand. That's why people become confused. That's why they discourage. That's why some people even take their lives. They don't understand. I'm righteous. I'm nice. I'm holy. I'm good. And yet, this happened. And the thing that happened, they don't understand. Some people commit suicide. Why? They don't understand. What if in your life, like Daniel, anything happening here on earth, anything happen, happening there in the sky, anything happening there in the secret with conspirators, yet you understand everything. And you know how everything will end. Your life will be making progress every time. My life. My life will make progress every time. You will understand. You will understand. You will not be living in darkness. You will not be living in confusion. You will understand. Now I am come to make thee understand what shall befall thy people, not before you. What shall befall your people in the latter days? For yet the vision is for many days. Let's look at chapter 11, and I'm reading from verse 32. Chapter 11, we're looking at verse 32. And such as do wickedly against the covenant, shall he, the Antichrist, corrupt with flatteries, but the people that do know their God. Oh no, I understand now. The people that do know their God. I look at Daniel in chapter 1, that man knew his God. I look at Daniel in chapter 2, that man knew his God. He said, don't touch anybody. I'm going to the God of heaven. And I know my God is the God that revealed secrets. And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they knew their God in chapter 3. Hit your funny seven times. Do what you will. Our God, they knew their God. Our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from your burning furry furnace. I look at Daniel is now in uh, chapter 4 and now the king is confused and the king is unhappy and the king is fearful he's looking for a, a, an interpreter and he had not even had a dream he walked in majestically and then daniel have had a dream that confuses me and daniel said he knew his god tell me the dream right here without going off to fast i'll tell you the interpretation he knew his god there is a writing on the wall in chapter five and now they're looking for interpretation and this profane man Belshazzar he was so afraid his knees were knocking together and he said that nobody could bring a solution to the problem that was confronting the king and said call Daniel call Daniel call Daniel is the one man in the nation that is able to decipher is able to open up every hard sentence and here Daniel comes he wasn't thinking what am I going to do today what if God does not answer my prayer today? What if the revelation is not made known to me today? No! Daniel knew his God. The people that do know their God. And here is now chapter 6. And he said, all right, holy, holy man. All right, perfect man. All right, heavenly minded man. The lions, we cannot deal with you. The lions will deal with you. And then you open the door. You open the windows of the chamber. And then he began to pray three times a day like he always said. That's the, that's the man. He knew his God. What I'm saying is, whatever is happening in our world, you don't have to know that and know that and know that. There's only one person you have to know. Know the God of heaven. And that God of heaven, he will see you through. Every mountain you so did, you will climb in life, you will climb. Every place you so did, you will get to in life, you will get there. No confusion in your heart. The people that do know their God, they shall be stronger and they shall do exploits. Exploit doer. Are they there? 
miracle worker are you there your life will be a miracle look at chapter 12 i'm looking at chapter 12 verse 3 it says and they that be wise shall shine and they that be wise daniel was wise he was wise when he was with those other students and he dictated their curriculum and he dictated their diet and they forced them every other person this is what you do he had the wisdom he was wise he said Ariok will not eat that test us for 10 days and give us beans and water and then at the end of 10 days look at her countenances and then you can take the final decision that man had wisdom in communication and wisdom in courage and confidence in the Lord what if you walk through life and in every situation anyone you are dealing with anyone you are interacting with the Lord gives you wisdom he will I said it will. My brother, uh, look at the steps you have taken. You take that decision, you fell into a pitfall, and then you went there, you, you are you know, stumbling and falling because you don't have wisdom, the wisdom from above. Why don't you stay and stand still and be wise, wise for your personal life, wise in your decisions, and wise in the direction you are falling, and wise in everything, the interaction you have with people not worldly wisdom heavenly wisdom they that be wise shall shine at the firmament of the at the brightness of the firmament and they that turn many to righteous in daniel he turned many to righteous number one he had a transforming effect on his friends on Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego and the influence of Daniel made them to stand firm and to say our God is able he had influence on Nebuchadnezzar he said my counsel to you is this break off your sin by righteousness and then turn from your iniquities if the good days will come back to you again and because of that eventually Nebuchadnezzar said now I praise I honor I extol the God of heaven and he said and now I know the people that walk in pride he is able to abase it was the effect and the influence of Daniel upon him that's what the Lord is saying many people around you they don't have the wisdom they ought to have they don't have the new life they ought to have and they that turn many to righteousness shall shine as the stars forever and ever yeah. you forever and ever things will not always be like they were yesteryears the present is a new beginning and the lord will raise you up and everything daniel had daniel lived in his generation and now he's gone you are the man of the hour you are the woman of the hour and the Lord will do great things through your life in Jesus' name. Let me bring all that to summary. Watch a Daniel had and watch Daniel eventually experience. Uh, let's look at this. Number one, reading and studying after formal education i told you that already that's in chapter nine he kept on reading he kept on reading do you still read i asked myself do i still read of course i have to keep on reading if daniel was still reading at the age of 90 you read and you study after formal education number two readiness through supplication with faith and when he read and he understood by the words of of the book of Jeremiah then he went into supplication with faith and then number three is repentance while speaking seeking divine favor he came before the Lord and then he said Lord we have sinned Israel had sinned and show us forgiveness he had repentance while speaking and seeking divine favor number four refreshing 
of skill for further dutifulness. He had refreshing of skill and the angels said, I've come to make you understand. I've come to refresh your understanding. Number five is the revelation of salvation in its fullness. Seventy weeks are determined upon your people that Messiah will come. He'll put an end to sin and he'll bring in everlasting righteousness. Number six is the realization through self-denial and uh, fasting self-denial and fasting you see even at his age he could still fast and he said i took no dainty meat and for those 21 days he was praying he was also fasting and then number seven he had renewal and stuff steadfastness and faithfulness and the uh, angel of God called him beloved and then in number eight he had the regaining of strength and uh, usefulness and steadfastness and that's what the Lord will do for us as we come before the Lord and like Daniel and we look up to the Lord and we claim the promises of God the Lord will renew your strength he'll renew your standing uh, in Jesus name uh, and Number nine is the retaining of our standing without falling. Look at Daniel from that time that we met him in chapter one until the end of his journey. He did not fall, you will not fall. He did not faint, you will not faint. He did not falter, you will not falter in Jesus. Name. Number 10, the reconnecting with the supernatural without falsehood. You see, all the falsehood in uh, the time of uh, the, all those evil beings, except for the people that do know their God, they will be stronger and they will do exploits. Number 11 is to focus on shining stars forever and ever. He, fo he refocused his life. The teenage years have gone in the twenties and thirties, all that, all that has gone. He came to his sixties, his seventies, his eighties. Now he's about a hundred. He remembered, he said, the people who turn many unto righteousness will shine forever and ever as bright stars. And then number twelve is a reasoning, a reasonable rest and sustained service on the field. Reasonable rest, we work, we rest, we awake, we sleep. And anybody will tell you, any scientist, medical person will tell you that your brain needs rest. And that's why we sleep at night. That's why we don't stay up and we're watching this and watching that, watching this and punching this and uh, kind of browsing that. The brain needs rest in the night because of all the work you've done. Then you're weary, you're tired, and now you go to rest. And as you rest, it's not the rest of death. It's the rest to recover everything you have expended during the day. And you wake up in the morning, actually, those doctors tell us and they are experts in their field they say the average person needs about seven hours of rest at night if you know you are going to wake up early you rest you start your rest at the in good time and then after that you are refreshed and when you wake up in the morning and your energy is fresh some people say i'm a morning person and at the beginning of the day i wake up like this i refresh myself and I look at what am I to do today that will contribute to the achievement I have to have today. And then you exercise and then you are ready now, you are ready to go. And you get to the place of work and you do everything you need to do. You might even have an afternoon break, rest. And then you continue and then you come back home, you are with your family. And it's a form of resting and relaxation. You are discussing with your wife, your husband or your children and you know, you are like that. You your mind is getting readjusted. We need rest after we have done everything. And then you 
and before you sleep at night you, you if you have journal you're saying uh, tomorrow this is what i will do and uh, this week this is what i will do next month this is what i will do and you're planning everything and with all the plans you're following the plans you're walking you're resting you're walking you're sleeping and you'll be going on like that you'll never be tired I'm talking to somebody there, look at me as I'm looking at you, you will never be tired. The strength of the Lord will carry you through. And if you go through all these that we have gone through, and like Daniel, you become of an excellent, extraordinary spirit, the sky is the limit. You'll be an achiever. You will be a conqueror. Great things will happen in your life. And through your life, at your own time, we will know you came, you saw, you studied, you served, you conquered. Are they conquerors there? Rise up and let us pray. And take everything you have learned. Take everything to the Lord in prayer. I'm going to come back and pray for you uh, before we go. But I'll ask our state of us here in the here to lead us in prayer. In a few minutes, I'm still here. I'm going to pray for you. Don't go. You're going to have a real supernatural touch of the Lord upon your life. Overseer of Ikiti, please uh, pray with us. And then I'll come back to pray. Let's try so. We've had much. A great investment this morning that we bring the another Daniel out of you. Why do you say, oh Lord, thank you for helping me to be a participant at this Impact Academy today? Where the character study you will never forget in your life. And the name of that person is Daniel. Pray, Lord, make me another Daniel. All the virtues and all that Father and the Lord has brought out of Daniel, may the Holy Ghost transfer into your life today. May the Spirit of God transfer into your life today. A man of excellence, wisdom, courage. Look at those qualities. Don't forget. Because of his connection with the Almighty God. That's why those qualities flow from Calvary to his life. He didn't manufacture them by himself. It was the grace of God that put them in his life. The same grace is available. All you need to do now is say, oh Lord, I come. I want to have a relationship with you. I surrender my life unto you. Make me another Daniel. Make me a Daniela for my generation. He was in a strange land, yet... God made him what he was. Those qualities came out. Pray unto the Lord. Help me, O Lord. I surrender. I surrender. These qualities will make you to make a mark in your generation. Anywhere you are. He was in Babylon, but the whole story revolved round about Daniel. Anywhere you are, you will be a point of reference. You will be a point of influence. Pray, O oh Lord, here I surrender. Lord Jesus, I give myself unto you. I won't wait my life anymore. No more just uh, roaming about. Joining useless peers. 
or just surfing dirty things on the internet now. I want to make a way in life. Pray. The Lord will recharge you today and make another Daniel out of you. Help me, O Lord. I surrender. I give myself unto you. All these qualities in Daniel, you will put in my life. Excellence, exceptional. Lord, here am I. Where are you? You have had so much. Pray that the Spirit of God will transfer them to your very heart. Lord, I'm coming out of this impact academy. A Daniel, a Daniela. And I make up my, my, I make up my mind. When I get out there, I propose in my mind. I will never allow anything to defile me, to pull me down. I will never allow be involved in anything that will separate me from God. Lord, I'm going out. I'm going to be a lily. I'm going to be a light everywhere I go. Help me, O oh Lord. Put these qualities in my life. The Lord is doing something in your life today. You are coming out of this place ten times better than you came to this Impact Academy today. Everywhere you go, you will excel. Excel in your study, in your career, in your profession. Help me, O oh Lord. Help me, O oh Lord. Help me, O oh Lord. Keep your relationship with the Lord. Pray that nothing will separate you between you and God. Help me, Lord. Put all these qualities in my, in my, in my life. Courage to stand for you like Daniel. Dare to be a Daniel. Dare to stand alone. Courage to stand. Courage to be steadfast. Courage to stand for the truth all the time. Pray the Lord will grant unto you. You see how diligent Daniel was? Darius could see that. And so he decided he was going to promote him. Pray that God, the Lord will help you. You'll be diligent. You'll be focused. You'll be determined. You are disciplined like Daniel. These qualities will bring the best out of you. Pray unto the Lord now. Today, the Lord is starting a new story, a new history of your life. As you surrender your life to the Lord, heaven is writing a new story about your life. Say, so, Lord, here am I. I know that Daniel, make out of me. Make me a Daniela. Help me, O oh Lord, to stand for you. In Jesus' name we pray. A louder amen. amen. Your story is changing today. Amen. A Daniel will be born in your heart today. Amen. A Daniela will be born in your life today. Amen. That's why you want to make up your mind now. It's God that did it for Daniel, and Christ will do it for you today. Amen. You want to surrender your life? You say, oh Lord Jesus, I surrender to you. 
What to do these qualities you put in Daniel? I know you put in my life today. If you are taking that decision today, and you want that foundation to be laid in your life, just raise up your right hand now and say, oh Lord, I give myself to you. I surrender. I want to become another Daniel of my generation. Can you raise up your hand? As God sees your hand, God bless you. You can see those hands. Heaven is looking at those hands today. And this decision is what we lay the foundation and we bring from heaven today all the qualities that we saw in Daniel. Heaven will drop into your life today. When you are connected with heaven, can you raise up your hand and say, oh Lord, I connect with you. I will not serve the devil anymore. I will not serve sin anymore. Just tell the Lord as you raise up your hand and say, oh Lord, here am I. I'm connecting with heaven today. I will no more serve sin. I will no more serve the devil. I'm going to live for you for the rest of my life. Raise up your hand as we pray together now. Almighty God, we are grateful unto you. Thank you for your word. And thank you for this character you are bringing out as a model today. And what you did in his life because of his determination and connection with you. Lord, I commit these young ones and young people into your hand, youth, students, and young professionals. Lord, that they connect with you today as they surrender their lives unto you. I pray, O oh Lord, whatever has been the record of their life today, Calvary will wipe away in Jesus' name. I pray the blood of Jesus will wipe away all the record of sin, inconsistency in their lives in Jesus' name. Lord, you have promised whosoever comes unto you, you will not cast away. Receive them today. Accept them today. And let there be a transformation in their lives in Jesus' name. And as they are surrendering today, the grace to remain steadfast, you will grant unto them. I pray the Holy Spirit will witness in their hearts they are now children of God. Confirm their decision, O God. And the grace to continue to stand like Daniel for the rest of their lives, grant unto them in Jesus' name. Thank you because you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Our Daniel for this generation, where is he? Daniela for this generation, where are you? Life will be different from today. You'll walk faster, you'll grow higher, you'll have more courage for life in Jesus name yeah. everything you have achieved until this day will be the foundation yeah. you're now coming on you're going to go higher yeah. brighter yeah. better yeah. holier yeah. godlier yeah. healthier yeah. more of heaven in your life this world will look at you and they will know your special favorite of the almighty god all those of us here at the alpha location online over the radio television anywhere you are now a new life is now beginning raise up that hand father in jesus name you are the God of all power, the God of all love, the God of all mercy. Lord, I pray that manifestation of your power that will promote everyone, every man, every woman, every boy, every girl. Lord, send it forth in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray all the past failure all the past defeat, all the past sicknesses, all the past uh, confusion, everything wiped away. Yeah. A new life, yeah. a new beginning, yeah. a new understanding, yeah. a new progress starting today in every life in Jesus' name. Yeah. Wherever you should have been, but you are not there, 
Whatever you should have got, but you have not got it. Whatever you should have kept, but you have lost it. I pray that every loss will be found again in your life. Defeat cancelled out of your life. Sickness gone out of your life. Lord, I pray every good desire, your son, your daughter, everyone here, everyone over there, all their good desires and all your good plans concerning them, fulfill in Jesus' name. I pray that new strength will come to you. New wisdom will come to you. Open doors will be open wide before you. And every sorrow, every suffering, every sickness, and every deficiency, everything taken away. All the finance you need for this progress of your journey. All the manpower you need for this progress you are going to have. All the support you need for this new life and new profession. Lord, I pray, supply to everyone in Jesus' name. You, by the grace of God now, by the power of God now, by the influence of heaven upon your life now, you'll be a problem solver. You will be a life changer. You will be a destiny maker. You will be more than a conqueror. The wide world is before you. Go now from here and go and succeed. And go and conquer. Everywhere you go, be a shining star. Your life your influence will turn many to righteousness. Life of strength, life of power, life of achievement, life like a shining star. Carry on, nothing will stop you. And when we have chance to meet again, you will tell a story ten times better. You will show the life, the achievement, ten times better. Ten times better in health, in joy, in achievement, in conquering, in profession, in life. Everything in life, the world will serve you. While you serve the world with the new power you have now. The glory of heaven is upon you. Go ahead now with that confidence and courage. Every lion will get out of your way. All the fire of Nebuchadnezzar will be quenched from your life. Joy unstoppable. Life unconquerable. Go on. The Lord is with you. In Jesus' name we pray. It is done.